Hey folks, we're going to jump straight into getting some stud work done today, get these walls finished, get ready for the electrician and also have a look at some new toys. So we'll talk about laser levels and a couple of the options later on in the video, but for now, let's get these last few studs in the hallway. So I've got it down here. I've already marked up my bottom timber there. And the nice thing with this one is that it has a really good span. So it goes all the way up to, well, beyond vertical. So I can now go along that top timber there and transfer these. Sappy stud. No one likes a sappy stud. That's the kitchen wall done. It's pretty much the strongest wall internally in the whole building. This wall is built from 89 mil CLS, so it's thicker than the other walls. So one thing I did on this wall is I put two rows of noggins. So really that's less about the strength of the wall, but giving me somewhere to anchor units to. Now the other option would have been to sheet this whole wall out in 18 mil ply or even MDF. And that would have given me a load of space to just hang anything anywhere. The only problem is that would have been two and a half, three sheets and the other side of sheet material, which is both expensive and weighty. So just by putting in one length worth of, of extra blocks in there, it means that I've kind of done the same. Right, I'm still looking a bit pasty and green in here, I'm afraid. Um, we will get some lighting in here at some point, but the next job on the agenda is to get the walls battened out. And you'll see this wall, I've started on that already. Let me show you that, and then we'll make a start on the end. Right, so we're over on the wall. 
we've got the 400 mil spacings of our battens. That, that is to make sure that we haven't had to cut into our OSB anywhere, which is our airtight or draft proof layer of the building. And we can run all of our cables and even some pipe work in between these cavities. Where I need to, we can just use a router or just cut through with a circular saw to take any notches out just where we're running cables. But for now, I'm leaving it as it is. And then as we get to the end wall, it changes. So whereas on this side wall here, we've gone 400 centers, batten at the top, batten at the bottom to catch all the edges of our plasterboard. There's not too much plasterboard in the building, so I want to minimize the chances of any cracking, bearing in mind there could be movement in the building. Um, but where we have got some, we've got it in uh, vertical positions and it's fully supported everywhere. When we get to this wall, we've decided that we're going to do a feature cladded wall this end. We haven't decided on the wood yet, but it'd be more of a either a rustic or boarded or I don't know, something like that. They're going to be running vertically like barn boarding. So instead of having to do every 400, every 600 should be fine. And I'll also be running them horizontally. Again, that just gives the ability to run cables between them to go over to sockets and um, TVs or whatever we've got over that side in the lounge. That'll carry across all the way to that corner. And that's what I'm going to do now. And to help me do it, I'm going to use the laser measure because this video is kind of about lasers. So let's go for it. Right, so finally onto this wall. And the difference on this wall, like I was saying, is that we're going horizontal. But instead of going just 600, I'm making sure I catch the window sill, and then just above the window, and then I get to 600 above. So we're not actually going with 600, we're going with 600 or less. I just wanted to reassure you that you don't necessarily need lasers, but it does make your life a little bit easier. For example, when you're trying to get your tape measure out and it's just too long and floppy and you're working on your own, then a laser measure can be super handy. And likewise, if you're measuring like we were for the first stud walls, you know, nine, 10 meters, then it's normally longer than your average tape measure. But remember, there's always a way if you don't have the kit. So laser levels, great. Spirit, even spirit levels, great. But you know, buildings have been built straight and true and level years before any of that came along. So there's always a way, whether it's the water levels like we did the chassis with or string lines when we were mapping things out. But even simple things, like if you're working alone, especially, just cut yourself your spacer button. And I've used that here just to make sure, one, it's gonna prop up the baton at one end whilst I work on the other, but it's just a way to replicate. So I know that wherever I go, I can just use that to space out. Remember your first one is gonna be slightly different. If you're trying to work to 600 or 400 centers, it'll be uh, half a baton less. Uh, also, if we were gonna go horizontal all the way around, I could have made up like a story stick, a story pole, and I could have marked up on the table all my centers could just go along, pop it there and transfer my marks onto the wall. That's another easy way to go. And that wouldn't really, and that wouldn't really have used, you know, leveling as such. We would have just been using the floor as our datum. That said, technology can help. And I think I've proved that today. You've seen lasers all around here. It's been like a cheap wedding disco, but there is a time and a place for lasers and I'm not gonna knock it. Yes, you can always manage without with certain things. However, here's a little look at what happened during the week when I bought a laser level, then another one showed up and then I bought another one and 
here's the explainer. And then later on in the video, I will give my lowdown on what I would recommend you do. Last week, before I started any of the stud work, I had a new laser level arrive. And I filmed myself unboxing, getting all excited, and realized it's exactly the same as the one I'd seen on Amazon for 70 or 80 pounds less. So it's been sat there ready to go back to screw fix. The Amazon one showed up today, but all of the stud work so far, I've managed with just the laser level. Sorry, with the spirit level, today we're gonna up our game. For a bit of an interesting comparison, I've also bought a budget one off Amazon. I haven't told him yet, but it's my brother's birthday present, so it will be used for a few minutes for this video. But we'll do a bit of a comparison because that one was 20 pounds and this one was 150 pounds. And we'll just see what the difference is. So that's the actual laser unit. You get a target, which I haven't used before. This is essentially a target you can put and it'll help you make, it helps make the laser more visible, I think. That's why it's the color it is. And we've got a series of brackets. This one has got a slotted keyhole screw so we can fix that to a stud anywhere if you were tiling or anything like that. It's also a rotating mount and it's got feet. And this is the receiver. There were a number of receivers within the same system. So there was an LR7, which looked like a digital one. This one is part of the kit is the LR6. And what the receiver is going to do is mean that we're not going to have to rely on uh, the visual of the laser, because when you're outside, especially if the sun's out, it's very, very difficult to see. And you might only be able to see it five, 10 meters away, whereas this should pick it up up to 50 meters away. So if you're laying out for a building or field or fencing or anything like that, you could use this. Okay, so this bracket is for the receiver. That clips in there. And then this just winds out like a little vice clamp. So that if we've got a staff of some form or even just a piece of timber, we can clamp this on it and then use that. So as far as our units go, we've got this one here, which in its kit form with the receiver was 150, but usually considerably more than that. And we've got this one here, which albeit is the same color, was 20 pounds. Um, and in theory, they kind of do the same thing. I'm not sure how well this is gonna show up on the cameras, but we've got both side by side. You can see we've got a little bit of wobble in our chassis. But this one here is the budget one, and this one here is the Bosch one. Although you can't really tell on this camera, the Bosch one is considerably brighter as well. But the difference continues in a big way when you look at the vertical line. So when we were mapping out our stud work the other day, I couldn't really set the level on the floor and put a beam all the way up because this one just fades out when it gets to a, just above ceiling level. You can see as we go up, we hit the ceiling. The budget one is getting fainter, yet the Bosch one carries on all the way across. all the way across to right, literally right above the unit itself. That is a huge difference and the same goes for on the floor as well. Couldn't find a way to lock this one off as well. Sometimes if you are doing a dado rail, for example, up a staircase or some paneling and you might want to set your laser at a specific angle and lock it off. I guess we can do that here, but it doesn't, it just seems to turn off the laser. Let's have another go at that. Oh, there we go. So if you hold it down and lock it off, it is then possible to vary your angle and it would stay locked. So that feature would work just fine. And we're still reaching the end of the building there. There's no reason why you couldn't use this for just about anything on, on a renovation job. I don't know what the insides are, but again, it's just like a pendulum. So it should always find level. There's also a lens at the top there, which is perhaps what is helping with the beam going all the way across. You can see it's putting a dot straight up vertically. Let's see what other options we've got on here. Vertical only, both and horizontal. Not the easiest to tell, but you can see this one here when they are both a similar distance from the wall how quickly it fades out on the left there, it disappeared by the time it gets to the 
halfway point, and then this one just carries on all the way up. Right, it's Saturday afternoon, and I'm trying to get a little bit done in between family time, but I wanted to give you a bit of a lowdown, like I said, at the end of this video, to give you my thoughts on the laser levels that I've been using. Firstly, you cannot go wrong with the laser measure. This laser measure I've had for three or four years. It was probably one of the cheaper ones on Amazon. It does everything I need it to do, and the distance is fine. I've laid out the old workshop and all sorts with it, even outside, if you pick your time. Pop out in the, in the evening with a beer and do it then when you can actually see. Only one beer, whilst you can still see. Um, but yeah, so a laser level, uh, I mean a laser measure, sorry. And I don't think I've changed the battery in this ever. I don't know what it does, 40 meters. There you go, so it's gonna do most of the things you want it to do. I do find that it has a minimum distance. So if you were going between two very close studs to get a precise measurement, it might not pick up on, well, 250 it does at least. So that's a good one to do, and I will put it down in the description. It's also a good present, you know, stock and filler. Um, I've bought a couple of these for people in the past. The question is, this one, the new one, the beast, or this one, my brother's birthday present. In all honesty, this one does most of the things you're ever gonna want from a laser level. One, it locks off. It seems very accurate. I mean, a pendulum, should self-level anyway, but it seems as accurate as anything else we've got here. All the levels are really true compared to this, and this one and this one line up. So unless someone's telling porkies along the line, I would trust this. It also does the same thing. It does the flat line, the vertical. It locks off to give us our angle. It's got a tripod mount on the bottom, and I think that's just about, about all, you, all you can ask. It goes, you know, 10 meters-ish indoors, we know it fades out a little bit vertically and along the floor, but unless you're, you know, it's good enough for stud work, unless you happen to be carrying your same line of panelling along the, you know, ceiling and then down a wall or something like that, you might have to move it a couple of times. But for most situations, this would be perfect. But again, I will put a link to this one, one of our Amazon affiliate um, links if you want to find it. It doesn't have a brand, oh, rock. Rock seed is what they've called it. But anyway, I'll put that in the description. Would I suggest this? Uh, absolutely, if you need a laser level that does a little bit more than just that. This one, for example, is gonna be more likely to be able to be picked up outside. Let's test that actually. Yeah, I can just about see it on the wall outside and it's pretty bright out there but that's not really what it's designed for. And you're probably not gonna be using it to send a line up on an outside wall. But this paired with the receiver is where this really differs because that receiver can pick up on this 50 meters away. We could lay out a building, we could lay out you know, the height of fence posts or walling or something outside, concrete footings. I think that's why this um, is gonna be a really well used tool over the next few years. So possibly a little bit elaborate for in here but then again it does cast a much bigger laser and maybe a little bit brighter so all in all they both do the same thing they both got slightly different uses well i need a really good tidy up in here it's got to get done this weekend but uh, <laughs> i can barely walk over this side of the building so as i get through those battens it should clear the floor up a little bit the rest can go up into the barn and hopefully we're going to be ready for some electrics next week. Next video on the cabin, we'll be getting the roof prepped up, ready for our roofing. You'll notice it's a little bit darker in that corner. That's because I actually have some roof sheets on. But there was a whole load of stuff to get done before that. Bit of joinery, fascia boards, barge boards, all that good stuff. So that will be the next video. Thanks to everyone on the screen now for supporting us on Patreon, as well as, of course, our project sponsor, which is Speedy. If you want to find out more, head down in the description. There's a bunch of links down there. And also you can head over to Instagram if you just can't wait till the next video. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. We'll see you next time.